Hello there. I never thought we'd be seeing a Transformers and Sopranos crossover, but yet. Yeah. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student here in Australia, absolutely shooting his shot, and I am watching The Sopranos for the very first time, this absolutely fantastic show, this groundbreaking show in TV. It's absolutely phenomenal. We are up to episode 11 of season four. This one is titled Calling All Autobots. No, I'm joking. It's called Calling All Cars. We're going to get into the reaction. We're going to have some fun with this thing, and we're going to absolutely smash it. Let's go. Calling All Autobots. We got Peter Cullen, man, one of the greatest voices in television and cinema. Not the owner, Mike. It's amazing what you can do when you focus on just here. one thing. These are Australian ads. That's Have a brand. watch. Look. That's home loans. They're what we do. So if there's a way to get you into a new home, we'll find it. It's a Ram home loan. Listen, the Ram home loans actually are right. like big up the Ram, but the other ads, I don't know. I feel like American ads have such energy to them. I don't know. They're pretty cool. You overdo it in the Super Bowl, but it's good. It's good. I like them. I like them. They're funny. Our ones are just dead firm. There's an example. Wilson Fisk. In the Cadillac. Alright, this has got to be a dream. Yeah, this has got to be a dream. There's a dream straight, straight out of one division, this one. You want to take it for a test drive? I was like, yep. Oh my gosh. All the Gumas appearing in the back. We're going to have a mad session. Your dream sequences in The Sopranos. Absolutely outstanding. I love how the color grading in that dream sequence as well looked a bit washed. Everything looked a little bit grainy in my opinion. And it wasn't meant to be pleasant it wasn't meant to be good looking gloria didn't even have makeup on her carmella didn't have makeup on her they weren't glowing or anything they all looked tired they all looked drained even ralphie right there didn't have his hair on had the butterfly at the back of his head oh oh man, 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 man. well only 30 seconds in like crazy Wusa, Wusa. Last week we talked about you feeling like the sad clown. Oh, and uh, my friend had a caterpillar on his head. It turned into a butterfly. Has your friend recently changed? Not friend, associate. <laughs> and no. What do you think the dream means? He Can cocooned. You tell me what the fucking thing means. A he I mean, cocooned. Obviously, no. He cocooned back up. Why do we have to go through this exercise every time? I they, don't obviously know. I didn't have the dream. They wrapped his body the back up. Was elicited through verbalization. And the Gehoxagogan is uh, framed up by the Ramistan. Okay. Your wife, your mistress, a business associate, you, all in the same car? Your father's car. With my wife driving, which if my father were alive... He wouldn't have stood for for two fucking seconds. I hear anger. No, I'm just saying. The old guys were different. Men in the front, wives in the back. You like that arrangement? Actually, I think the wife should ride in a little cart behind the car, like in the <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> behind Noah's Ark, there's a little boat with the skunks. So wives are skunks. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. It's a fucking joke. Does it have to be like a cancer hospital in here? But Carmela is in control in the dream. Why? Because she's driving? Whatever's gone on with the other two, you want to square it with Carmela? Why? Well, that's what we need to find out. Freud says dreams are wishes. Dreams are wishes? I thought you said that dreams uh, represent repressed urges and... It depends. You know, I ought to quit this fucking therapy. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's a fungal. What about impulse control? I've been sitting in this chair for four fucking years and still nothing's been done about that. And it leads me to make mistakes at my work. What good did you do me with that? I said it time and time again. Do you reckon Melfi's sort of like curiosity about Tony um, sort of like overwhelms her nature to do therapy? 
in a way to implement coping mechanisms, to implement strategies to deal with Tony's anger and things like that. Or is she just not really a good therapist? Is she just has, or is she just, is she just a therapist we see that has just different modes of communication or different modes of like, you know, tackling these things? Because in my opinion, um, like I said, I feel like a therapist should, ra okay, rather than just prescribe drugs, implement strategies, do this, do that, start being consistent with this, and it might help your mental health. You might have these, but I feel like just with Melfi, she throws questions back at the problems and confuses Tony even more, and that gets him even angry even more. Like I said, I just feel like she's, o she's so overwhelmed with curiosity about this character, how he thinks, this mob boss, that I feel like it, um, it sort of, how do I say it? It's sort of like, um, it not nullifies, but it stops her or prevents her from, you know, implementing what therapy should be, in my opinion. Let's get back to the dream. Oh, fuck the dream. It's just a dream. Jesus Christ, the money I've been dropping in here, I could have bought a fucking Ferrari. At least I would have got a blowjob out of that. What do you mean? Please, huh? Don't get me started. I think you're glossing over the significant accomplishments we've made in here. Oh, my mother would come when she looked at a pot roast. Oh, you're second in the birthing order. Oh, Carmela's driving the car. How fucking interesting. When you first came here, you were clinically depressed. You suffered from panic attacks that put your life in danger. There's been significant relief in both those areas. Yeah, but... I mean, come on. I've been coming here four years now. I've been a good sport. <laughs> Time out. Your jacket. You're just getting over a cold. Come on. What's in the box? Oh, it's a cake. Oh. <laughs> We done here? Fucking Ralph. Where's your point man on this thing? He missed his drops this week. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. I love how he's trying to pin it back on Johnny Sack. <laughs> it's so good. Doing a little bit of investigating. Even Johnny Sack is starting to wear darker clothing. Are we seeing a transition in Johnny Sack? The dark side. The toothpick is daddy's. He likes it still moly. Took it to Karen's grave. I buried it. Today was our anniversary. 14 years. I wish you would have told me about it before I picked up the steaks from Outback. Besides, alone, we're over $30. <laughs> what the fuck is that got to do with the man grieving? How often do you go to the grave? Every day. That's what I miss the most. Talking to her. Believe me, Bobby. I know. I lost both my parents. It's very easy for people to give facile advice. Suck it up, move on, etc. I'm not going to tell you that. Grieving is a process. Sometimes courage isn't a value. Hello. Look, let's not let this thing get out of hand. We've been doing good business for a while now. Carmine agrees. I agree. Well, 40 percent's not going to happen, and we all know it. I'm going to go five and a half. Hello. Not acceptable. Bam. I want you to pay a visit to this Pollock. Tony Soprano's got doing phony house appraisals. Vic, the appraiser. Make this guy understand that he's going to be working for us on these shithole houses we bought in Jersey. You got it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm sensing a wall with New York brewing. Well, maybe if we did something bad, you'd haunt us for our own good. There's nothing to be scared of. Go back to bed. <laughs> Bobby Jr. scared. Bobby Jr. scared. He had to be the man of the house right there. He had to put on the tough guy act in front of the sister. Can't show weakness. They 
could be a change. Tony? Suffice to say, no matter what happens now or in the future, Carmine won't forget you. And uh, as far as us talking like this, it's just because we're all friends. And I know I can blow off a little steam with you. Cheaper than the bartender. I'm only trying to bring good relations between the families. As I always do and always will. <laughs> what happens or who's in charge? If it's me, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> oh man, I love this show. Uh, you know what the f funny thing is? I was at um a bar yesterday and one of the guys comes up to me and I, I like I haven't known this guy. Like I know of him and I've said hi to him here and there. Hardly like we don't have deep conversations or anything. We're at like a soccer game, meeting with the boys, everything. He comes up to me, he goes He's Croatian. He goes, do you do YouTube? I'm like, yeah, why? He goes, I was on YouTube and I saw your Sopranos reactions. I'm like, what? I'm like, he goes, bro, that's my top three favorite shows of all time. I haven't started watching your reactions, but I'm going to do it. I was like, my guy. I was like, that's hilarious. Oh, man, it was so good. Is he around? Shaving. How's your boss? Shaving his face. Oh, your employer there, uh, Miss... Kavalenko. Fine. The reason I'm asking is because uh, we didn't get the bill. Here he is. I fucking had it. <laughs> but what? Everything. My guy still got the shaving cream on the ears. Did you offer my nephew something? I'm ready to send yours. Not made. Did you offer him an aspirin? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn, that's a bad one. Oh, wow. What's with you? Ah, this fucking competency hearing. Delayed twice, and now it's coming up on Friday. I don't know whether to chill the champagne or shit in my pants. It's gonna be. Oh, you got shaving cream all over you. Huh? Won't you wash yourself off? It's over here, too. Yeah, it's that fucking lighting upstairs. If Bobby had put in the right wattage. But listen, we find out where the jurors meet every day before they get bust to the courthouse. And this mental competency thing don't work. I don't want to talk about it. So, what is the story there with you two? Um, I just want to commentate quickly on Tony's dream at the beginning of this episode. Um, now, it's clearly um, a very... Like, obviously, I love how it's sort of like... Um, it felt like an old school dream, obviously with his dad's Cadillac, um, uh, very like sixties in terms of like, obviously it's like a wallpaper road, uh, just very old fashioned. Um, I don't know if that's meant to represent sort of like the theme of bad choice road and in, in terms of like his decision making and he can't see things clearly. It's just a never ending road. He doesn't know what to expect. Um, uh, interesting how Carmela herself is in the driving seat. And I think Tony doesn't like that lack of control. Um, he doesn't feel that sense of control right there. Um, and then obviously he had ralphie at the front seat and then the switch between um gloria and svetlana interesting that um valentina wasn't there um but i just want to say like it's interesting to see the distinction between that sort of dream and the boardwalk dreams we get um i feel like the boardwalk dreams i don't know tony even though some of them are nightmarish at points i just feel like he has more of a sense of control with the boardwalk dreams. I feel like there's a sense of clarity. There's a sense of like what to do. Because you see the boardwalk dreams, that's where you got the idea that, you know, um, Pussy was the rat and he had been flipped over and, um, you know, he had to send him with the fishes. Um, but yeah, I just feel like the boardwalk scenes provide some sense of, you know, clarity for Tony. There's some, you know, there's some peacefulness there. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of open sea. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunities to think. I just feel like there's, um, there's endless possibilities with that, but I just feel like with the scene right there, uh, with the other dream with the car, I think there's a sense of like, claustrophobia there's a sense of like i ain't getting out of this um that's what i feel like that's what i feel like i just feel like yeah he feels enclosed he feels entrapped um and there's no way out and he has to you know bail himself out of there there's so many problems overwhelming him and enclosing him um and he's trapped he's this that 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 sort of like um enclosure is in is getting smaller compared to the boardwalk scenes open skies open beach open horizons like the, the sea is right there you know the world's your oyster but this time he was in a car he's confined he's trapped um I could be misreading it, but that's how I feel like it at the moment. First watch. Thank you very like. much in morning. 
We're stuck at Platonic. Well, Karen was a wonderful person. I'm sure God must have his reasons, but uh, sometimes you have to wonder. Well, I'm sure she was as good as gold, but he's developing a psychosis. Her clothes are still in the closet, and yesterday he bought her a cake for their anniversary, and he buried it at her grave. What? At her grave? God forbid that I should say something, because then I would be perceived as a harpy coming between him and his dead, idealized wife. What's wrong with that? It's Listen just... I, you. What, what's the difference between people putting flowers at someone's grave and, you know, burying a cake for their anniversary? Maybe it's a thing they did on a year-to-year -year basis, and he's just holding... You know, he's just continuing that tradition. Like, why is... Like, the, the fact that Janice is losing her patience with a man that just lost his life, grieving takes time. People deal with losses differently. Like... What the heck? Any plans for Sunday? Bacalieri's are coming over. Why don't you make those kids feel welcome? Bobby Jr.? That could take a lesson. I don't ask you to do chore one around here. You can go without seeing Devin and your friends for one night. Yeah, well, we're supposed to study. But I guess you don't care about that. Oh, you're studying something else, man. Get out of here. Freaking entitled brat. I just feel like... Like... Doesn't have to do any chores, but just like... Hey. Yo, Vic. You don't return Johnny's phone calls. What did you say? Oh, I'm only the appraiser. That necessary. Well, now was that necessary? Be at the red chimney on Route Three, nine o'clock tomorrow morning, ready to go to work for Johnny and Carmine. Now, was that necessary? Vic is scared now. Nobody knows where he is. Look, it's a bluff. They don't really want to start a separate operation. You know the costs that are involved in our kind of a HUD scam? You got the appraiser, the poverty pit. They want in on a going thing. You want me to pay a visit to Johnny Sachs, guys? Just say the word. You already have. Nah, you know what? I'm not going to go fucking ballistic. Oh, due respect, T. Throwing your appraiser a beating was a provocation to you directly. Curious. Right, you tell him to stop beeping that fucking horn. I'm gonna show it up his fucking ass. Hey, so. All right, so. Enjoy the game. I'll see you, pal. All right, B. You ever talk to a Beansy down there in Florida? Now and then. Does he ever run into Carmine's son down there in Miami? I'll be on my cell. You need me. Uh, Beans tells me. Uh, he sees all Carmine all the time. Oh, maybe Beans can feel him out. See if he's receptive to a meet with me. Maybe we can work this shit out. He talks to his old man. Beans, he's gonna happen to run into him. Not like we're asking. Very delicate. Very delicate situation. I've said that so many times. It's gonna be handled expertly. Yeah, no cactus for me. Cactus. <laughs> You're not Italian if you don't like artichokes. So what, Mike Piazza eats nothing but artichokes? I mean, that's dicked up. Language. All right. I like rice. Maybe I'm Chinese. <laughs> ah, so, Papa son. <laughs> AJ. You too, Bobby. Hey, hey, at least he's engaging with the kids. Like, the, I don't know, they're racist, but like... <laughs> Dinner time. Sure, BJ? You're really missing out. I said already. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hi, Mr. Soprano. Okay, now I see. There was a comment that said Devin looks like Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> and now I see it. I see it. It's the white Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Devin? <laughs> Devin, would you like something to eat? Devin yeah, Haney. I'll um, just meet inside. Mm. Did she tell you who I saw at Chance Hardware last week? Oh, God. Do you have to tell every person you run into? Hello. Tony, it's me. Beansy! Fine fiddle. In Florida. I spoke to a friend. The son. He seemed very receptive. Tuesday night. We'll meet down here in FLA. We'll pick a place later. I got my stepdaughter and her friends this weekend. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring them along. Okay, good, good. Thanks. Somebody will call you. We're heading down to Florida. Anthony, I'm upstairs with that girl. You two come with me. 
Don't. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go in on them. Anthony. The the window's probably open. Oh my gosh. It's not supposed to be closed. We were studying. Is this how you treat your guests? My Yo, guests. That was slick, Anthony. bro. Look at this. Look at this transition right here. He was doing something, and bam. The not supposed to be closed. We were studying. Is this how you treat your guests? My guests. You invited them. These kids just lost their mom. Could you give them a little time? You know how much little Bobby likes. Is that Coldplay in the background? Daycare. You must have a million games in here. Clue, Monopoly. Help them pick something out. Yeah, come on in, kids. AJ's gonna help you find a game. I love Bobby Jr., man. My Baymax looking friend. I love him. Spirit. No, not a Ouija board. No! Fuck! Is Bobby Jr. gay? <laughs> and they were just talking about no, ghosts, man, before. Last time with the dead little baby. Yeah, quit messing around. Watch, the mum's gonna get involved now. Oh, it's gonna get scary. They're gonna F up the kids' brains. I'm getting serious. Is she making new friends in heaven? Maybe we should play something else. Yeah, this is stupid. Let's play Clue. Yeah, you're just a scared little baby. No. Scared? I have this game at home. I used to play it all the time. Until it got boring. How about we try and contact the dead for real? Just heard from my friend. The other guy will sit down. I'm going on Tuesday. Want me there? No, I was thinking of bringing Paulie down. Next time with you could be with me. It's on the rag lately. But then I decided against it. The other day, we were talking about Florida. I noticed you clammed up around Paulie. You did too. It occurred to me that maybe Paulie's the one telling our friend in New York all our business. That transition from let's contact the dead to Tony on the phone. And I was like, I spoke to our other guy. I thought he was referring to Ralphie, who's dead. But no, maybe that's like a foreshadowing transition right there with Tony. Let's contact the dead um, in Tony. Um, or maybe that's how they New York sees him, as dead to them. Um, or on that potential path at the moment. So very, oh. Somebody had to pass along that fat joke. He was in Youngstown at the time. In the can. What? People can't visit him? Jesus. You read this shit. Talking about fucking poorly here. Well, for now, he's got no reason to know about the trip. Nobody's got a reason to know. Absolutely. I need to know basis. Get this fucking appraiser working again. I got houses just sitting there. You gotta hold hands. And nobody let go. <sighs> the most important thing is that you keep your eyes closed during the ceremony. Because if you open them, Whatever spirits we're speaking to will permanently remain trapped between worlds forever. Are they gonna hook up while their eyes are closed? Everybody's eyes shut? This is not the thing to do to kids who just lost their mom, man. Oh, great spirit from beyond. Piss off, AJ. Reveal yourself. What? I heard it. Me too. Wait. I see a... A gray mist. Little specks of light. The That's abyss? What I'm seeing too. Wait. I see somebody. An old man. Spirit from another dimension. Vecna? Can you reveal yourself? What's that? How come he's only talking to you? Because I'm the oldest and closest to the afterlife. Shh. You're a sea captain? Barbosa? Captain Jacobus? What? He says it's a terrible storm. It's raining where you are? Waves are smashing against the boat? Ah! Will Sophia is going to be traumatized by this man. Ah! Oh my god, what happened? Uh, nothing, we were just playing. We were playing Ouija board, and then AJ did this seance. Dad, I want to go home. So, it's just a Ouija board. She's just scared. It's okay, honey. Daddy's here. This is your idea of fun? You scared these kids half to death. I didn't do anything. He freaked out. Why'd your shirt all wet? Bobby, look. He had a sponge. After what we just talked about, this is what you do. You asshole. You fierce one. Robert! You, say goodnight. You, get out of my sight. Hey, yo. I remember a time when I was more disappointed in you. Good night. Want to know something? 
He locked me in the garage at the guy with the ponytail's house. Bobby, I don't even know what to say. I am so embarrassed. <laughs> Part of growing up. Don't worry about it. Where's Meadow when you need her to take care of Sophia? A bit more mature, you know? Handle things different. It's funny, they use that same sort of um, camera technique with the cameraman sort of running and the camera sort of like held very closely towards the ground um, to capture sort of like the the feet running or like sort of like the legs running. It's like that sort of like low angle shot right there um, when Ralphie was running towards his son um, when he got shot by the arrow in the backyard. What do you think, you could hide from us? Tony bought three more houses than the appraisals, Victor. I can't. I told you, please. Johnny and Carmine's guys, they hurt me. That's nothing compared to what we're gonna do, Victor. So go back inside, get your praising shit, and start appraising. This guy's got two visits from two different crews. Would you like to move? Also, can we talk about how quick the parents got upstairs to... <laughs> <laughs> to freaking AJ's room right there. That was like some speed dial shit. Like, that, my guy teleported up there. They hit the apparate from Harry Potter. They were up there like that. Literally, it's like they were waiting outside the door. <laughs> What's the matter? You went to the cemetery today, didn't you? How do you know? Bro, who cares? Because you got the cemetery mud on your shoes. Mud? What are you, Marge Hinchin, Brenda, now? What do you know about the mud? You've been spying on me? Why? I can't go to the cemetery. I gotta get permission from you? We're talking about you, not me. It was a grave and the funeral and it's never ending. You don't want to let it go. Did you even pay the funeral bill yet? I'm never gonna pay it. Son of a bitch put an extra 15 pounds on Karen when they did her up. This dispute with the bill is morbid clinging. But this is exactly what I mean. We have a nice evening and we end up talking about your dead wife. You invited me. The other night at Tony's, your kids were trying to contact Karen on a Ouija board. I mean, what do you expect? You're talking to a headstone. She's my wife. Well, she's dead, and I'm here. Now, shut the fuck up. Thank you. Shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. Janice? Oh, my gosh, man. This woman. Send her to the afterlife. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you instructed Christopher to shoot the sheriff, actually. I want to thank you. Yeah. Tony, it's Stefana. Oh, hey. I'm just receiving the brooch. Ah? I want to thank you. Ah? I don't know why I deserve it, but... No, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I want you to keep... The older women oh. getting horseshoe earrings now? <laughs> Diamonds like this? Oh. It's a very nice gift. Very sweet. And uh, what's happened between us? Crazy to see the distinction between how Valentina received the earring with how Svetlana received the earring and how sincere she was. And then, you know, Svetlana threw it right back in his face. Ah, oh, sorry. S Valentina threw it right back in his face. And Svetlana was like very appreciative of it. Very sweet. And like the tone of her voice was completely different. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. And I think Valentina in that scene with the restaurant, she's like, does she suck your dick better than me? I was like, whoa, damn, this woman on fire. Like, <laughs> it was nice too. Okay, well, uh, that's it then. These things happen and then life goes on. Are you sure? Because if... What about Bill? If you ever want to talk or if you ever need anything... No, it's all right. Thank you for the brush. She took care of my mother, too. Your former girlfriend's cousin? That one, yeah. Is she your current guma? No, it was a brief fling kind of thing. No, but after a while, I felt like I had to cut off the leg. Not leg, a fan. <laughs> I say leg. Oh Why my. did you cut it off? Oh my she gosh. What happened? I bought her the, this diamond pin that I oh, send okay. to every woman when I'm easing out the door. I'm such a fucking prick. You know what? This is all bullshit. It was she who gave me my walking papers. She did. You believe that? She what did. Meant was you know that... why she didn't want to see me anymore? She said that I was high maintenance. And this is after all the time and all the money and all the fucking Prozac and all the fucking cocksucking motherfucking dream interpretations. 
And she said she didn't want to prop me up. And this from abroad that walks around on crutches half the time. Nice, huh? Do you agree with her characterization of you? I'm a miserable prick. I've said it since day one. And you're no longer interested in changing, in finding a way out. Doesn't she have a man's though? No, I guess not. And he just didn't like hearing that side of it? Like, bro. I said this last time. You just didn't want to hear it. He says that to every woman. I've got a wife, but he still goes back to him. You should be in therapy. Just because the opposite happened to him, he doesn't like it. What the fuck has it gotten me? Okay, maybe it got me some shit in the beginning. Some leadership strategies. All we do now is we sit around half the time shooting the breeze about philosophy, the Italians, my Uncle Eckley. I try to keep the focus on the work. So when it goes off, it's my fault. Okay, fine, I accept that. You know what she says? This broad. She's from Russia. Dirt poor. She had some kind of also karma disease in her leg when she was nine. She says that nowhere else in the world do people expect to be happy, except for here in this country. And still, we're not. And we got everything. And when we're not, what do we do? We go to shrinks. For what, six, seven bucks a minute? There's some truth to what she says. But should that be a source of shame? That when the desperate struggle for food and shelter is finally behind us, we can turn our attention to other sources of pain and truth? Pain and truth. Come on. I'm a fat fucking crook from New Jersey. Anthony. Now that the panic attacks and the baseline depression have been dealt with, the real work can begin. See, I knew you'd say something like that. Because it's true. When we're not constantly having to put out fires, we can really delve into who you are. All right, let's see now. Really after in your very brief time on this earth. And you can say that I'm running away, but I've been here longer than I ever thought I'd stay. Longer than anybody ever thought I'd stay. And you know what? I get no appreciation for it. You've shown a lot of courage. I commend you on that. Well, thank you for the commendation and adios. He'll be back. He'll be back. Look, don't fall, don't foul. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Come to your next appointment. One more time. You'll cover my $300 a week in no time with some other motodella. All right, I shouldn't have said that. You saved my life in the beginning. And for all the times I came on like an asshole, I'm, I'm very sorry. And if you begin to feel any of the old feelings, you need to call me. So it's customary. I mean, you shake hands. How about a diamond pin? <laughs> oh, she didn't like the sound of that. <laughs> There we go, the cheek rub again. Okay, well, uh, Trademark Tony. The cheek rub. The long kiss, good night. The long kiss, goodbye. <laughs> You've reached Dr. Elliot Kupferberg. Please leave a message at the sound of the beep. If this is an emergency, you can reach me at 973-555. 7089. Well, guess who's no longer a patient of mine? Calling all cars. <laughs> what is she doing? What is she doing? Oh, is she posing as, like, a ghost? Or is she trying to, like, comfort him here? Or being completely manipulative? She's even got the devil username, the triple six. This motherfuck... Mm. Or is that is that Bobby Jr. with the, the devil username? Username is six six. No, so it was freaking Jack. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, Janice, you are, I'm about to... Where's Fat Albert when you need him? I need to go into that screen and sort her out. Mr. Melboyne, I've read your application for dismissal on the grounds of mental incompetence. I, I love the juxtaposition cut yet again, the favorite word of the show, with Tony sort of having that freedom to go to Miami, and then we cut to the courtroom of Uncle June's trial. You know, he's confined in that space. We'll see if he's going to be put off house arrest here with his mental incompetence, or is the case going to be dismissed? Um, and I love Svetlana's ability to stand up to Tony and, you know, willingly and, you know, be appreciative to accept the gift, but not accept um, him as, you know, uh, not, not to accept him as, you know, his... Uh, as a side chick or as his gourma, which Tony probably wants from her, you know, the other individual Valentina said threw the, the brooch back to him and she wanted him, but not the gifts. Um, and yeah, Tony, I feel like once Vetlana more, hence her in the dream in the car, you know, you see her after Gloria, she's the one Tony wants next in line, but unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, but it's, it's great that she's able, you know, to realize that it's a one and done thing. You know, I'm going to stand up for myself and I'm not going to fall and into I've that trap. the findings of the doctors in this matter. Frankly, they were unmoved by Mr. Soprano's performance. Wow. Your Honor, to couch it as a performance. It's their opinion that he understands the charges and that he is more than competent to participate in his own defense. I'd like another round of testing. Your Honor. Mr. Kasselman, I didn't come all this way to stop this trial now. Court will convene on Monday at 9.30 to continue proceedings. Your Honor, please. Since his injury, I have not had a single conversation with Mr. Soprano in which we've related on any meaningful level. Feel free to take that up on appeal. Panic attack? Oh, I thought it was sensing a panic attack right there. Fuck. We'll get to a jar. We're working very hard. Got to tamper with the case a little bit now. Got to get to the Jura. AJ's, AJ's behavior this episode has pissed me the F off. I'm surprised Devin's still taking him. Like, what the heck? Hello. Bobby, hi. What's up? I was just doing housework. Why? Is everything all right? I'm about to link it, man, at this woman. Oh, my God. The way she struts in. Tell me about it. Got home tonight. Kids were kind of quiet. Then bedtime, all hell broke loose. The crying, wouldn't be left alone. Sophia was special. <gasps> playing with that goddamn Ouija board again. Oh no. They were trying to contact Karen. Why? my fault hey you're under a lot of stress you're a single dad no you were right it's bad for them it's unwholesome you want me to go on i think they're asleep finally i had to read to sophia for like an hour she couldn't even handle the nancy drew it was so so bad man um, go ahead it's just Somebody need to send have nothing to say to us, Bobby. Janice to an early retirement. It's our own narcissism that makes us think they even care. It does get better with time. No, it doesn't, because clearly you got more effed up with time. Did you get anything to eat at least? Can I fix you something? Uh, it's too much trouble. No, it's not. I'm starving too. She's going to go. Oh, I thought she was going to gonna go for Karen ZD. Oh no, she going for the ZD. She going for the ZD. Karen ZD. It's the last one she made. And it was like 300 degrees in that Minnie Mouse head. So I took it off, you know? I was gonna have a cigarette. And some kid. Yo, I gotta get down to Miami. Damn, ASAP. These gentlemen have things to discuss. Let's go. Hey, nice see you at the ball later. So that's Carmine's son here. Carmine Jr. You basically know what's going on with your dad and Johnny and us over in Jersey. First, let me say, I understand. 
And I appreciate the respect you've shown me by coming down here and reaching out to me at this time. Always. And I will also go on record as saying, I know my old man could be a tough nut to crack. I don't want to crack nuts. But I will. I feel the anger. When I try, for the second time, on a separate issue entirely, to reach an accommodation, and he don't even make a counteroffer, where's his respect? I have no way of knowing what kind of advice he's getting from Johnny. Johnny's always usually a voice of moderation. Me and him, we get along good. So all due respect, let's not jump in and blame John. True, John's a pragmatist, but he's also a greedy motherfucker. Lives above his head a little. I am reminded of Louis D. whatever's finance minister. Does something. He built the chateau. Nicole and I saw it when we went to Paris. It even outshone Versailles, where the king lived. In the end, Louis clapped him in irons. But Carmine, bear in mind, he came onto my turf. He tried to recruit my Mourignan. And worse, he roughed up my appraiser. The proper response is not forthcoming in a business-like time frame. My next move will not be for the conversation. <laughs> also, you should know that my next call will be to Johnny Sack to let him know that we talk. He shouldn't feel blindsided. That's good. Open communication. I just feel like going to Carmine's son could possibly make things worse. Just potentially. Who knows what he's going to say to his father. He could be, you know, easy going with Tony, um, you know, and blindside Tony. Maybe tell his father different things than what Tony said. Cause a stir up, cause a state, uh, cause a shake up. You're eating the food of the ghost. I like how we're seeing bold Ralphie. Is that Hesh's? Is that Hesh's front porch? No, or is that Ralphie's house? Tony coming in to do the dirty work. He dressed like Leatherface. <laughs> Working on the farm. Hello? Hello? Got the different accent. Got the different accent. That's Livia. That's Livia's clothing. Gotta be. Is it? Me no. Speak the English. <laughs> Made this be arch. Yo, ghosts appearing like no other this episode. I'm getting chills with this dream sequence here. That's scary, man. That was the way I, I I'm not I'm not sure if that was Livia, but the way they obstructed her face right there, used her clothing, um, had sort of like the same hairstyle. Um, that, that's a great lesson in cinematography and lighting right there. Almost as if it was like a stairway to heaven. Like the gold lighting behind her coming down the stairs to welcome Tony. And it's almost as if Tony in the opposite scene right here is in hell. With this red lighting, similar to the way Ralphie entered in whoever did this. In the butter bing. I literally was talking about the beach and the horizon and the board work um, this episode and that Miami, Florida view crazy, man. Giving some peace and clarity, hopefully. We'll all be out route. We're I, I, I love the callback, I think, in that ending right there to whoever did this. I think it was um, with whoever did this at the end. You had Tony waking up in the butter bing. 
um, and him walking and you had the two lights shining down um, and him opening the door and obviously it dissolves to white. It was this white sort of like flashbang in your face um, as the dissolved to the credits right there. And right there, I thought it was going to be a similar ending. But no, instead of the dissolve to white, he opened um, the balcony sort of doors right there. And, you know, he had a, sort of like a sense of clarity. There was a, there was a clear view right there. So I love the interesting sort of like tie-ins to the ending of that episode to this. And then notably this episode, we're dealing with the ghost of Ralphie as well and tying into whoever did this um, in that episode with the acts Tony committed. And he was sort of like the farmer in that episode cleaning up Ralphie's body as well with the way um, he dug up the head. Obviously chucked him in the ocean, but the way they dug up the head with the bowling ball with the, um, was it not the tractor? Was it the tractor? Or whatever the thing is, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> the tractor, whatever. Um, but yeah, in this episode, you have him opening and I thought, I was like, oh wait, are they going to dissolve to like, sort of like that um, white? Are we going to get that sort of like heavenly like ending in the episode? But no, um, he opened it um, and it was like that beautiful sea view of um, Miami right there. So yeah, very interesting. And you know, he was sweating, he was panicking, but he, I don't know. I felt like he seemed to gain some, uh, regain some sense of control at the end of that episode. That was a fantastic episode. That was a fantastic episode of Sopranos. I keep saying that every episode. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction as always. Been your body Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.